Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. You're going to want to stick around for the last report. I have some exclusive details for you. Remember me tell you. Stand by for it. But first, the stealing of motor vehicles in Jamaica is on the rise. Saturday night, June 15, about 20 minutes to 12 midnight. A 56-year-old accountant, he parked his White 2013 Toyota Mark X motor car in the parking lot at Ken's Wildflower in Portmore and went to a popular business place to have a drink with some friends. He returned to the parking lot in a little bit over half an hour's time and the car was missing. Somebody thief it. Also, Monday night, June 17, a 34-year-old businessman he parked his silver 2014 Toyota Mark X at his home at Marlin Way in the Brayton Phase 1 area of Portmore and retired to bed. We are told that when the man got up 7 o'clock in the morning, the car was still there. But by the time he went and had a shower and was about to leave his home about 8 o'clock in the morning, the car was missing. Somebody thief it. People, you must find ways and means to protect your investment because, like I said, the stealing of motor vehicles is on the rise. And we are talking about the 14 parishes of Jamaica and still in Portmore. On Tuesday afternoon, June 18, about 2.30, a team of police officers acting on intelligence and armed with a search warrant. They went to Swamp Lane in the Port Henderson area of Portmore. A premises was searched and bingo. One Taros 9mm pistol with the serial number intact. Affixed with a magazine containing five 9mm rounds were found. A 25-year-old guy named Renardo, he's from 5 East, Greater Portmore. He was taken into police custody pending further investigations. No. You remember I carried a story yesterday about that fisherman on your screen that was shot and killed Tuesday morning? He was killed at Pigeon Shoot in the Portmore area. His name is Teddy and Michael. Hoodlums killed him and stole his boat. Well, what we are learning is that the gun that was found, it is suspected to be the murder weapon. I also told you that one of the four hoodlums who were there when Tedian was shot and killed is called Prince. We are being told that Prince, he has handed in himself to the police. Intelligencers, big up on yourself. And Portmore Police, job well done. This next incident, it took place Tuesday night, June 18, almost 12 midnight. It took place at the Bird Mountain Square in the parish of Westmoreland. We are told that the police, they were on patrol in the area when they responded to reports of a loud noise. Whilst there, we are told that the police, they saw a guy standing across the roadway from where the music was being played. On seeing the police, he was allegedly seen by the police removing an object from the front section of his waistband and dropped it to the ground at his feet he was accosted by the police and the object retrieved and bingo it was found to be a black bursa thunder 9 mm pistol with the serial number intact affixed with a magazine containing eight 9 mm rounds as a result the guy was taken into police custody he has since been arrested and charged by the police his name is Santino Smith. He is 24 years old and he's living at Williamsfield in the parish of 
Westmoreland. So, Santino, he'll be going to the courts shortly. Westmoreland Police, job well done. Over in the parish of Sentan, detectives at the Ocharias Police Station, they are searching for a guy known as Sanjay. He's wanted for gun-related charges. We are told that on Tuesday, June 18, a guy who is popularly known as Blacks, he's said to be in his mid-30s. Blacks was walking along the road at Mansfield Heights in Ocharias when it is said that Sanjay called him a gelding. Question. Do you know what it means when a Jamaican male calls another a gelding? Well, it means that that man who is being called a gelding is not the father of a child or children. Got it? So, the allegations are that on Tuesday, Sanjay, he called Blacks a gelding. As a result, an argument started and both of them started styling each other. You know what styling mean, right? Yeah, man, disrespecting each other. Tell them to go suck out this and to go do this. That's what it means. Styling. <laughs> or one of the meaning. <laughs> it is alleged that yesterday afternoon, Wednesday, June 19, about 3.30, Blacks, he was walking along the Mansfield Heights main road when he was attacked by Sanjay, who boxed him up several times. It is alleged that Sanjay, he pulled a gun from his waistband and pointed it in Blacks' face, telling him to take box and if him try anything, bullet. Sanjay, he boxed up Blacks a few more times then walked away. A report was made to the police, so... Sanjay, he's now wanted by the police. Boy, may I tell you, <laughs> every puss and dog have access to an illegal gun in Jamaica. You best believe. This next incident, it took place last night. Wednesday, June 19, about minutes after 7 o'clock. It took place in the vicinity of B&B Bar at Nareen Lane in the Old Abbey area of St. Catherine. We are learning that a 21-year-old male, he's popularly known as Rasta and he's living in the Old Abbey area. Rasta, he was standing in front of the bar along the roadway when a motor car drove up and stopped. A hoodlum in the car fired two shots at Rasta, hitting him to his left hand. The hoodlums in the car they then sped away, making good their escape. Rasta, he was rushed to hospital where he was treated and admitted. The mayhem. Now, in this next report, the Portmore police, they are awaiting the result of a post-mortem to ascertain how a female met her death. Her name is Chantal Tobias. She was 24 years old and she lived at Gerbera Avenue in the Old Britain area of Portmore. We are told that Tuesday morning, June 18, at minutes after 9 o'clock, the police, they were called to the scene of an accident in the vicinity of a restaurant at Orchid Close in Old Britain. On the arrival of the police, the black Honda Stream motor car that Chantal was driving, it was seen wrapped around a column. Chantal was seen slumped around the steering wheel of the car with Wounds to her upper body and her face. She died on the spot. The police crime scene investigators, they processed the scene. It is believed that the wounds that she received were caused by shattered glasses from the car. But, like I said, a post-mortem examination will be done to ascertain exactly what caused her death. Stand by. As soon as we get more information... We'll be updating this story. In this next report, I carried a story on Sunday, March 17. It was about an incident that took place the previous night. Saturday, March 16, about 9.30. It took place at Hartford in the parish of Westmoreland. We are told that residents of the area, they heard gunshots being fired. When the smoke was clear, 
they went and made checks. A guy named Romario Grant, but he was also known as Dodds. He was 26 years old at the time and he lived in the same Hartford area. Dodds, he was seen lying on his back along the left side of the road in a pool of blood. The police, they were called and when they inspected Dodds, he had received gunshot wounds to his upper body. He appeared to have died on the spot. When the police processed that crime scene, a total of 16 spent shells to include 0.45 and 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. Well, the police, they have now made a breakthrough in that case. A 27-year-old guy named Andrew Black of the same Hartford area. He was picked up by the police at a popular fast food restaurant in Savannah Lamar on Friday, June 14. He has since been charged for one, murder, two, possession of a prohibited weapon, and three, using a firearm to commit a felony. So, he'll be going to the courts shortly. The mayhem. The me so, let me ask you something. <laughs> Let me ask you know, something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, I'm going to go back and I'm going to be giving you some exclusive reports. Listen carefully. For a while now, there has been a gang of hoodlums who have been creating havoc in the content, riddles, friendship and surrounding areas of Westmoreland. They are responsible for many murders committed in that general area and in the parish of Westmoreland. They kill men, women, and children. Now, let me go back in time and remind you about an incident. Listen carefully. On Wednesday night, December 1, 2021, about a quarter to 9 o'clock, that guy on your screen, his name is Jashian Johnson, but he was popularly known as Togo or Simple. He was 27 years old at the time and he lived at Friendship District in the parish of Westmoreland. Togo, he was shot and killed by hoodlums while riding a bike along the Red Hills Main Road in the parish of Westmoreland. It was said at the time that the bike that Togo was riding was a stolen motorcycle and he was returning it. Two persons were eventually arrested and charged by the police for the killing of Togo. One of them is Vivian Henry, but he's popularly known as Solan. He's living at Friendship District. The other guy who was charged with Solan is that hoodlum on your screen. His name is Tevin Robinson, but he was popularly known as Sean Storm. On February 9, earlier this year, Sean Storm, he celebrated his 25th birthday. At the time that he was charged, Sean Storm, he lived at Content District. So, both Solan and Sean Storm, they went to court. And I'm not sure about Solan, but Sean Storm, he was granted bail by the court. One of his bail conditions is that he should not be living or seen in the Content District area his lawyer told the court that he would be living at kiev district in the parish of westmoreland he was told by the judge to report on condition of bail at the bluefields police station a few days a week so sean storm he took up his bail and he was living at kiev district despite the fact that the judge told him that he should not be seen in the content district area. That did not stop Sean Storm. Listen this now. 
Remember, I told you that that man on your screen, Kirk Hall, he was now a big time farmer. He planted a lot of yams, but goats had been destroying his yam ground. We are told that Kirk, he sent out many warnings that the owners for the goats should tie them up. Otherwise, he was going to kill them. Sean Storm, he was one of the goat owners whose goats had been destroying Kirk's yam ground. We are told that one day, not so long ago, Kirk, he went to his yam ground and he saw some goats in it eating down his crop. I am not sure how many goats were killed, but Kirk, he did what he was threatening to do for a long while now. Goat neck take off. As it turns out, Sean Storm, he was the goat owner, so he went to Kirk demanding money for the goat that he killed. We are told that Kirk, him run away Sean Storm. Sean Storm, he did not take that lightly, so early Tuesday morning, June 18, at minutes to 4 o'clock, he went to Kirk's home where he shot and killed Kirk and his wife, Merlin. Like I told you yesterday, he also opened gunfire at Kirk's 8-year-old grandson who, although the bullets missed him, he fell to the ground and pretended like he was dead. That was what saved his life. Well, Sean Storm's clock was ticking and with all the murders he committed over the years, Tuesday morning's murders turned out to be his last Yesterday afternoon, Wednesday, June 19, about a few minutes to 4 o'clock, Sean Storm, he was spotted by the police along the Bluefields Main Road in front of a grey Toyota Vitz motor car. The police stopped and was approaching Sean Storm when he decided to pop off and in a few seconds it was all over. Sean Storm, he fell to the ground clutching a black Taurus G39 9mm pistol with the serial number intact. It was affixed with a magazine containing two live 9mm rounds. Sean Storm, he ended up dying on the spot. Another hoodlum bites the dust. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend. About Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite.